Hey guys, it's Courtney. I'm back with my second video for today, and I'm going to be using the Avery L stamp set Frosty Friends. And as you can tell by all my stains, this is a much loved stamp set. So I have a piece of Nina Desert Storm cardstock, and this is cut with the largest stitched rectangle die from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to be stamping my two little snowmen here with my Blackout Ink by Ink on 3. Before I stamp it down on my paper, I am just taking my stamp chamois there and just removing the ink from the bottom portion of the snowman. I'm also stamping them onto a, a full stick post-it note and masking those out. They, it doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be perfect for what I'm going to be doing here. I'm not going to do any ink blending or anything like that. So I'm just basically cutting the basic shape of the little snowmen and masking both of those out. Next, I'll take some inexpensive acrylic paint, just put a few drops on my acrylic block and a few drops of water and just water that down with any paintbrush will do. And I'm just gonna work on a scrap piece of paper here because this kind of gets everywhere. And I'm just gonna splatter it all around the background. It'll kind of look kind of like snow, more like a blizzard, but I'm also, before I do that, just masking off the very bottom. It doesn't have to be anything specific. I just don't want to get any of the acrylic paint on the bottom. I let this dry for, I would say, about 15 or 20 minutes before I removed my masks, and we'll move on to the coloring. So we're going to be mixing some Copics and my white a colored pencil and I have the polychromos but you can use anything. I'm going to be doing a little bit of shading with my warm gray markers for where the snow is on the bottom and my darkest color here was the W5 and then I'm going to cover up the entire area with my white pencil going directly over where I shaded with the Copic markers and I wasn't getting a whole lot of contrast. And I felt like the W5 was a dark enough color, but we are working, we're not working on white paper. So it just wasn't, it was mainly, the pencil was mainly covering up everything that I had done with the markers. So I'm going to go on to the snowman. I'm, obviously these are white too, but I'm going to have my W7 as my darkest color. Just going to go one shade, or as far as the Copics I have, one shade darker, but still shading the same exact way. And for the shadows, it's going to be underneath her little arms and where she's kind of behind him. And then I'm going to go over the entire thing with that white pencil. And I'm applying a, a decent amount of pressure. I'm not pressing too hard where the tip is going to break, but I'm going in with not all that light of a hand because I do want to get a complete coverage here. And I liked that much better. So I ended up coloring the snowman the same way with the same color combination uh, with the W7 being the darkest and being the white pencil is somewhat opaque I kind of lost my, the nose and the mouth of these little snowmen so I'm just taking an EK Success journaling pen and it you don't necessarily have to use this type of pen you can use pretty much anything just want something with a fine tip and I'm going to go ahead and just go over the lines within the image, the little buttons, the mouth, the nose, and the eyes. She has little eyelashes, so I wanted to make sure that I added those back in. So that, in my opinion, just makes her a little bit more feminine. So I'm going for kind of like a vintage look for this particular card. So I'm going to be using my Copics for the rest of the card with no color pencils, just the Copics. So I'm going to use the same color combinations that I typically use, but they will turn out completely different on the Desert Storm cardstock. So this is my go-to red combination. You guys have seen this before. Starting off with my lightest color, mapping out the darkest areas, going in with that darkest color, like always, coloring the exact same way as I normally do as if I was coloring on the Nina Solar White. But you can see that it gives you a much more muted look even though these this is a pretty bright red combination it does appear to be more muted but i also find that these blend a lot easier on this cardstock that those reds blend well together anyway but i didn't have to go over the same area more than once i got a perfect blend the first time 
So I'm going to move on to his, the little stripes on, well, first I'm going to do this little, I have no idea what you call this thing, but I'm going to do my shading on either side because I feel like this would be more of a rounder object and leaving my highlight in the center. And I'm just using some YG90 markers. I'm going to use the same color combinations throughout the entire card. The reds are all going to be the same. The greens are all going to be the same. And that's pretty much the only colors that I'm bringing in with the exception of his hat. Now his scarf is striped, so I want this to be red and green stripes. I'm going to go in with my greens first, just because reds tend to bleed a little bit. So I always, if I'm coloring an object with more than one color and red being one of those colors, I always save my red to last. Especially working on the desert storm, I usually fix up my, my mistakes with not necessarily a colorless blender, but usually a white gel pen. And with this paper, I can't do that. So I want to make sure that I try to avoid as much bleeding as I possibly can. So I'll color these other stripes with the same red combination. Now my shading for the top part of the scarf is going to be the top and the bottom because the way the stripes are shaped, you can tell this is rounded as well as the parts of the scarf that are kind of hanging off of him. One of those, one part is laying underneath the other so that would also create a shadow so again going in with the same red combination as i used for her hat just concentrating my shading being on the top and the bottom certain little areas like off all the way to the right there you're not really going to have much of a highlight if a highlight at all just because it's just such a teeny tiny area same thing with that one little part that is kind of tucked underneath his neck Blending this out with my two mid-tones, then I'll finally go back in with that R22 for the very center. Now, when the paper gets wet, so you're only going to really notice that it's wet with a lighter color, so the R22 is significantly lighter, it looks a little bit funny. So you may think that you're not getting a great blend. Let the paper dry. Alcohol inks dry very fast. But when the paper is saturated, it will give you a different look than what it's going to look like when it's dry. So just keep that in mind if you plan on coloring on the Desert Storm. So once his scarf was done, we're going to move on to his hat. So I'm going to bring back in my warm gray markers and basically color his hat black, but I'm not using the black yet. So my shading for this, because this would be a rounder object, it's a hat. So I'm going to put my shading on either side, concentrating a center highlight for the bottom part of the hat underneath that little, I don't know what that is, the ribbon, I guess. There would also create a shadow. And then blending that out with my mid-tone and lightest color for the little holly leaves and berries i'm not doing any shading on these these are pretty small areas and being we are coloring on the desert storm you're really not going to be able to tell that these don't have any shading at all so i'm just using one of the yg90 markers and one of those the darkest red for the little berries i wanted to bring in a little bit of black make sure that this is a little bit different than the hat itself a little bit darker so i'm using the same warm gray markers but my darkest color is actually the black marker so we'll move on to his little earmuffs and his mittens and again using the same yg90 combination that we have been for the entire card but obviously the shading is a little bit different so i did keep this in the video for his mittens that his one hand is laying underneath the other hand. So I wanted to make sure that that had a shadow there, even though we're not doing no line coloring here. So we do have those bold black outlines to fall back on. So you can definitely tell the difference between the two objects. If we were doing no line coloring, the shadowing is even more important because you don't have those lines to fall back on. I was getting such a good blend with this paper that I decided to try something a little bit different. So I'm coloring her little sweater here red, but I started going in with my lightest color first, and then I said I'm going to try to go in with my darkest color first. I'm pretty confident in knowing where my shadows should be, so I figured I'll try to see if I can still get a blend with that. So creating shadows underneath her little arms there, underneath the collar of her shirt, 
behind that little ribbon. And then I am still using the same reds. I'm going to go with my darkest mid-tone and just extend those lines out even further. And then the lightest mid-tone and then the lightest color. It blended and it blended pretty well, but I would probably not do this again. I'd probably like always go in with my lightest color just to get that paper saturated a little bit. I did have to go over this a couple of times with my lightest color just to make sure that I did get that blend. But like I said, it does look a little bit different when the paper's wet. So you'll wanna make sure that you give it a minute or so to dry before you make that determination. So last, well, almost last, I'm going to color her little earmuffs and the little bow on her sweater the same greens as before, shading her earmuffs the same way as I did his. And the bow, I'm just putting a little bit of shading where it's tied together, I guess, in the middle. And the little ribbons that are hanging down where that's kind of tucked behind the bow itself, blending that out with the same two midtones and then back to the lightest color. Now for the base of her little hat, this should be white in most cases, as well as the little pom-pom thing on top of her hat. So I'm going to do this the same way as I did the snow. I'm going to do a little bit of shading with the warm gray markers. And for her hat, I'm just doing, I'm just putting a little bit of shading where her earmuffs are because it would be more rounded towards her face. So that would be the lightest color. So once the shading was down, again, just like with the snow, I went in with my white colored pencil and covered that entire thing up. So once my coloring was done, I took a piece of a dark gray cardstock, and this is honestly just from my stash. I don't know what brand this is or what color this is, so I apologize. But I'm treating this with my anti-static tool and stamping my sentiment with Versamark ink sprinkling on some white embossing powder and heat setting this. You're not gonna be able to stamp directly over where we splatter that acrylic paint because it does give a little bit of texture to the background and the ink will not, it will somewhat resist the ink. It won't totally resist it, but you'll definitely see a difference in the part of the ink that's touching the cardstock versus the part that's touching the, the paint. So I'm gonna cut this down into a little strip and one side I just cut at an angle just to give it a little bit of interest and then decided that I wanted to do a little bit of layering as well. So I took that same dark gray cardstock that we used for the sentiment, and I'm just gonna be cutting this a little bit larger than my card panel. Now I could have measured my card panel and then just cut this a little bit bigger, but I was being lazy, so I kind of just lined it up there and used my paper trimmer to just give a little bit of a border. I will glue this down to this gray cardstock with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue. Then I laid this down on a white card base as well as a Desert Storm card base. because I just didn't know what would look better and I ultimately decided that the Desert Storm looked better. It kept with that whole vintage feel. So I popped that onto my card base with that same Tombow Mono Multi Glue and used a little bit of Scotch foam tape to pop up my sentiment right there in the center towards the top. That is the card or the second card for today. Thanks a lot for stopping by, guys. Have a great day. Bye.